Hey everyone, I hope you all are doing good and having a wonderful day. In this video, we are going to see that how we can do 403 bypass. Not only that, we are also going to see that why we were able to bypass that particular web application with the method that I'm going to show you. We are going to understand each and everything so that you will understand that why 403 bypass happens, right? So yeah, we're going to see that. So before going to this video, as always, if you haven't checked out my previous video in which I've shown you that how we can do price manipulation with the JS code is minified, then go ahead and check it out. The link of the video is given in the description as well as you can see at the right side of the screen, right? And now with that being said, let us get started. Now, as you can see, I have this web application over here, which says waf.bpractical.tech. So this is, I'm going to show you as an example, okay? So suppose that this is a normal web application and now we are going to understand from the developer's point of view or from the company's uh, defender's point of view, right? So how we can protect the assets. For example, let's say that this is the application waf.bbactyl.tech and if I go to secret uh, slash uh, seek secret.txt you see that this is a secret file, right? Which reveals the database password, I guess. Yeah. And now from the developer's point of view, we don't want to disclose this to the public user, right? So we are going to add a rule into the firewall so that this uh, endpoint will be uh, secured from the public user itself. If anyone who is trying to access this web application via the Cloudflare's IP address, then they'll get blocked. Okay. Let's see how we can do that. So the endpoint is secret.txt, right? And you see, this is the uh, application, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the uh, dashboard of my Cloudflare and you see over here in the security and WAF, I can create some rules, right? So free account is allowed over five rules, right? So we're going to see, uh, create a rule over here. Let's click on create rule and I'm going to name this rule as a web application firewall, right? And now you see that it says that if incoming request matches, so I'm going to select the field and in the field, I'm going to set the URI path. URI path is this path, okay? Slash secret.txt. So this is the path, right? This is the URI path. So I'm going to add this path. You can see that the example is also given. So if URI path is equals to, I'm going to add secret.txt. So if URI path is equals to secret.txt, then we are going to choose an action and we are going to block the application, block the uh, request, right? Like this. And let us deploy this tool. Now, once we have deployed this rule, you will see that if I try to reload this, okay, let me just open a new tab over here. Or uh, let's just go to Microsoft Edge. And now I'm going to type waf.bpractical.tech slash secret.txt, the same endpoint which we have just saw in the Brave browser. And this time you will see that the application has the Cloudflare has blocked this particular request, right? And you can see it says that uh, this website is using security service to protect itself from online attacks, right? So we have added a rule. So this is how a developer will actually add a rule, right? So you see, if there's certain endpoint, certain path that the uh, developers don't want you to access, then it is going to do something like this. Right? It's going to create a rule. And for example, over here, I just wanted to add security.txt. So I don't want anyone to access security.txt. That's why I have added this rule. And now anyone who's trying to access this security.txt will be blocked as we have just saw over here, right? So see, it is also very important to understand that uh, before reaching to this point, like before doing 403 bypass, you need to have some proper reconnaissance techniques so that you'll reach to this particular endpoint, right? So that you can do some uh, bypass techniques and all those things. So if you want to learn how we can do proper reconnaissance, then go ahead and check out my awesome course, which is the art of web application reconnaissance, right? So the link is given in the description. You can just check it out and you can learn a lot of things like domain enumeration, subdomain enumeration, content discovery, and a lot of interesting things, right? And all of these are mostly on the real world application. So if you're interested, then go ahead and check it out. The link is given in the description, right? So now we saw that how we can add this tool. Right. Once we have added this rule, let us try to understand that how we can bypass it. And then we are going to see that why we were able to bypass this rule. Okay. So you see over here, if I go to secret.txt, if I hit enter, you see that saying you have been blocked. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my Firefox over here. Okay. And now I'm going to use my burp suit as well. Okay. And I'm going to turn on the intercept and now I'm going to send the request. Okay. Let me just see. Yeah. Let us send the request now and I'm going to send this to repeater. Let's go to repeater. You see, this is the endpoint, right? I'm going to send the request. I'm going to, I'm going to just modify this a bit like this. 
you see that it says uh, public users are not allowed to access it and if you go to secret.txt over here secret.txt you see that now it says 403 forbidden just as we saw in the microsoft edge browser right now what we are going to do is instead of secret we are just going to make a small change over here so instead of small uh, letters in secret i'm going to make the first letter a capital one okay and now we'll see what will happen if we do this once i send request you see that the firewall rule has been bypassed right even though we have added uh, that secret should be uh, blocked right but still we are able to you know bypass the 403 right so this is as simple as that you may be thinking that why it is happening or maybe i'm doing some kind of tricks over here but it is not like that right many times you'll see in web application in reverse scenarios that you will be easily able to bypass uh 403 by using this simple technique right and this will work mainly in windows based server let's try to see why it will work right so for uh, i hope that you have understood till now what is happening right so we have just changed the letter and now let us try to see that why we were able to do this simple bypass okay let's see how we can do that now you see i'm going to log in into my remote desktop protocol into my windows server so let me just log in and then we'll see that why we were able to do this right so let me just log in and you see this is the web application that is running so it is a python based web application right and this is the directory where the uh, html page is hosted and you see here is the secret file if you double click on it you see that it is showing the exact data right so now you can see that even the file mentioned over here starts with small s right so this is the reason why that uh, security is different based on different operating systems. Let me tell you why. So if I open command prompt over here, and if I type, like if I want to see uh, secret.txt, what I can do is I can type notepad secret.txt. Okay. And you see that when I hit enter, I'll see the uh, content inside secret.txt file, right? Now, what will happen if I just, instead of uh, secret.txt, I make the first one capital, right? You see, again, we are able to see the same data. This means that it doesn't matter if uh, the letters are in small or in capital in Windows, right? So it is going to treat the file as the same file. What I mean by that is, for example, let's say that I want to create a file, okay? Uh, I want to create a two file, let's say bad.txt. And do test, let me just save this. And now I want to create another file, right? And say bad.txt, right? So the B is capital over here. So we cannot do this into Windows machine because it will treat both of these files as the same file. So you will not be able to create two files with the same uh, same value, right? Even though you have changed the uh, letters to uh, from small to capital or capitals to small, still you won't be able to create the same file. So this is the reason why we see that weird behavior we just saw, right? Because this application is hosted into Windows machine. If you try to do the same thing in Linux based machine, then it is not going to work, right? So let me just show you another example with my Linux based server, right? So I'm just going to log into my Linux server and then we'll see that if it is behaving the same way or not, okay? My VPS, let me just log in into my VPS. Let me create a directory test, sorry. Uh, Batman just for the demonstration you see I have nothing over here right if I want to create a file let's say bad.txt and if I do ls you see that we have the file bad.txt right and if I create again a bad.txt file in which the b is capital now you see the file has been created and now we have two files with the same value right but Linux treats both of these files differently, right? So they are not as the same file. They are different files, as you can see. And in all of these, in both of these files, the content can be different. This is why this technique is not going to work in Linux-based operating system. Okay, if we host this file in Linux-based operating system, and if we try to do the uh, same thing, like if we convert the uh, small letter into the capital one, it's going to look for that file. And this is, this file will be not available because Linux treats both of these files differently. We'll get a 404 not for. Yeah, so this is the reason why based on the operating system, the security will be different. 
right so i hope you have understood that why we were able to uh, do this kind of technique over here why this technique worked with simply because this application is hosted onto the windows server right so obviously every time when you're seeing a windows type of web application always try to do 403 bypass because the chances are very high that uh, in windows you may be able to like do the 403 bypass i hope that you have understood it if you have any doubts if you have any issues then feel free to let me know your doubts or issues in the comment section also do join our telegram channel if you want to stay updated with the latest trends and technologies going under cyber security as well as web development and if you like the way i teach then i already mentioned one course which is the art of web reconnaissance and then we have two more courses which is uh, the ultimate guide to bug, uh, account takeovers and we have hacking windows with python from scratch right so if you are interested then go ahead and check it out the link of all of these courses are given in the description and now with that being said keep learning keep hacking and thank you so much for watching